Okay, everybody, let's take it from the top. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hi ho everybody and welcome back to D Plus Us, the show about all things Disney and because it is finally that time of the year, of course, as well. Happy Pride. We're back in June. It's awesome. We're here. We're chilling. We are here today to not talk about Disney things again. And of course, I can't do that. It's Disney adjacent. Let me introduce you. <laughs> Mr. Mitch George is here. You, you, get a, you get a crap intro for now. That's fine. This is my favorite movie of all time. Let's just end it here. Can I go back watch the movie again, please? That's all I want to do. Look, that's all I want. I've seen this movie probably more times than someone should have this weekend, but we'll get to that. We are, of course, talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the second uh, Miles Morales animated Spider-Man movie from Sony. We cannot do this alone. This movie is too big for just the two of us. So, of course, we are bringing on guests. Ruben, welcome back to talk about more Marvel stuff. You are it's officially the guest back. we've had on the most on video now. Oh, uh, sweet. Perfect. It's exactly what I want to hear. Because, Kristen. you know, you want to be remembered for this and Ant-Man. Yeah, I I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna say, this is the makeup episode, for sure. If I have to be the Marvel guy, you just pull me in for all things Marvel, I'm okay with that, too. Yeah, yeah the, you'd be here all the time because we've also got <laughs> Secret Invasion coming. Yes, up. yes, this is very true. Not yes. to mention that we still have episodes planned for like Marvel's Avengers. I will be throwing Spectacular Spider-Man into an episode at some point, especially after watching this. Movie. Oh yeah, animated animated Spider-Man. Even if it's just the Clone Saga stuff or the the, the Spider Verse stuff they did, like let's go. Clone I'll just not watch Madam Web when that comes out. Clone Saga in general is just like instantly gives me a headache. Oh, that's the shit that I like. I'm sorry. Can I get on here? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's the that's all the stuff that I like. I love the clone stuff. I love the multiverse stuff. Just thinking about the it, web of life stuff. Like, exactly. It's so that's weird, what, and I love it. I'll tell you what. That's what I are, think about um, when I'm just like doing nothing. If I'll you're a Ben Riley fan, stuff like that. this year has just been the last year has just been like beating you down. Ben Riley yep. fans have had a hard time at it lately, and this movie does not until help now. <laughs> Look, he looks because I think this is the absolute best Ben Riley we have ever seen anywhere in anything. Oh yeah, well I mean, comics Ben Riley has forever been tarnished now, so we'll get yeah, into but, all. Of that I mean, now. also just Andy Samberg doing his best Andy Samberg is all I needed. Just being just purposely kiss. dramatic, it's beautiful and wonderful. Yes, it was perfect. And uh, I had no idea it was him until his monologue, but we'll get to that monologue in a bit, I'm sure. That's right. Did you see that? Did you recognize Jack Quaid in this movie? No, not until I just read the <laughs> cast list. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the details of this before we really get going to this. Of course, folks, this is going to be a full spoiler review. So if you've not seen the movie, go watch it. Come right on back. Obviously, we all love it. You should see this movie. This is probably going to be one of the biggest releases of the year. Um. But yeah, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, this time directed by Joaquin DeSantis, Kemp Powers, and Justin K. Thomas. Of course, written by Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, David Callahan. Uh, starring Shamik Moore, Haley Seinfeld, Brian Tyree Henry, Luna Lauren Velez, Jake Johnson, Jason Schwartzman. Yes, I consistently forget that Jason Schwartzman was in this movie. Uh, Oscar yes. Isaac, Mahershala Ali. Shocking to see him back. Um, Issa Rae, uh, Karen Sony. Uh, let's see what we got here. Music by Daniel Pemberton, who absolutely kills it in this movie. Yes. So, so damn good. Like, yeah, I have an entire, uh, he also, of course, did the music for the first one as well. Uh, but I have an entire new running playlist now, thanks to this movie. It's great. Um, runtime of 140 minutes released on June 2nd, 2023. Um, two days ago, as of our recording. Box office so far of two hundred and eight point six million dollars. This movie be killing it, y'all. This movie is yeah. killing it, and you love to see it, right? Like, absolutely. Just seeing animated because... animated stuff in general doing well in the box office is great, but seeing animated Spider Man do well in the box office is somehow just even better. Somehow, okay, this is gonna be this, this is gonna be my hottest take of the episode. Uh, 
I think Sony's most recent animated films, like nobody in the industry holds a candle to Sony right now. Sony is the peak of animation at the moment. And I'm saying that knowing full well, we record a Disney podcast where we talk about Disney animated shows and movies, but well, it's, between it's something not, like um, this, the Mitchells versus the machines, like they're just yeah, they're firing oh on my, all cylinders. I, and I'm all about it's it. It's not Sony, but Wait, we spent a was... solid month of episodes just talking about somehow just talking about Puss in Boots. <laughs> like the yeah. other animation industry, the other animated animated studios are killing it when it comes to this style of animation, these new things. Like the original Spider-Verse brought us into a new renaissance of animated films. And Disney is starting to go that way with uh, with Wish. A little bit. Not dude, I can't entirely. wait for that. But yeah, dude, we're in a new we're in a new time for animated movies, and that rocks. It's about time. It's about time. Yeah, seriously. Um I do have one question. I'm sorry to shoot. interrupt. But no, I, no, go for it. It's interesting to I just realized that uh Marvel has the rights for the, the Peter Parker Spider Man animation, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Now, do we assume that the reason why like Miles Morales has a Peter Parker or all these Peter Parkers is because they need Peter Parker in the MCU? Well, I think it's the the rights are in a weird place where like Marvel and Sony have an agreement for Marvel Studios to use Peter Parker in film, mm-hmm. but all of the all of the TV rights belong to marvel which is how we're getting marvel's gotcha, uh, gotcha, spider-man gotcha. fresh was it freshman year freshman and year. sophomore year, year. Yep. The then, animated like, shows that we're getting streaming is just streaming rules are just a myth they're they, yeah. they are yeah. the wild west when it comes to ip rights right now which okay so this is only happening because this is a movie pretty much yeah Okay. Because the okay. most recent yeah. Sony, Sony still has the, the final say on anything Spider Man when it comes to film, which is why all the MCU stuff has been co produced. Yeah, the most yeah. recent Spider Man cartoon, which I actually highly recommend, it is really good, um, has Peter, Miles, Gwen, Anya. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has all of the it. Kids I don't love the animation of that show, though, so it kind of turned me off from it. Yeah, I don't but... love the, that, but I love the characterization of the ki- of them. Yeah. Also, I love Horizon. Like more Horizon should happen. Also, they casually end the series by creating the uh, Worldwide Engineering Brigade, which is such a fantastic Spider-Man story. Yes, it's web. Yeah, uh, yeah. and it's all over the theme parks now. It's really I love it. Um, this movie. We we we're hanging out. Obviously, we love it. Ruben, I want to start with you. What were your thought? What are your thoughts about this movie? This movie is, uh, uh, I would say, perfect. Like, the, the, there's, for me, like, I, I liked the first one, and I just felt like there was too many, like, okay, let's run this back one more time. You know, like, there was too many Spider-Men introduced. This had that, but also kind of really didn't. It only focused on, it really focused on the, the main three, which were Miguel, um, Gwen, and, and Miles. Like Peter B. Parker was there with a little bit of a, a sprinkle, but it was mostly those three, and that's it. It was more of a focus, and I, I love that. Um, the animation was fantastic. Uh, somehow, it felt like a step up from the first movie, which I know it kind of isn't, but like, oh my god, Sony Pictures animation, phenomenal. Mitchell. Like Mitch was right, they have surpassed. Well, in my head, uh, um, Warner Brothers animation has always been top tier in terms of like movies, but like I feel like Sony Pictures Animation has surpassed them, which is crazy to say. Who would have thought a Sony movie <laughs> this good? Yeah, oh, Sony's man. track record isn't exactly amazing, but somehow they're putting these out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. night and day too, which is so weird. But I'm all for it. Mitch, how about you? I said it off the top. This is my favorite film of all time. Uh, I think some of that is recency bias, but like for me, this, this film does everything right. My, my favorite film of all time prior to this is the empire strikes back. And this feels like the empire strikes back of Marvel. Um, not just MCU, not just Spider-Man, but just Marvel as a whole. And it's just, it does like 
Ruben nailed it up. Like, it does everything right. All the way up to the end and spoilers, right? We're full spoilers at this point? Yeah, yeah, we're full spoilers right out of the bat. I can't talk okay. about this movie like, without spoiling that, it. Just getting to that cliffhanger and knowing knowing it was coming and still not wanting it to be there is just such a so emblematic of what this film means for the movie going audience. Um, I said this on social media uh, almost immediately after seeing the movie, but like for me growing up, Spider-Man was the guy like Spider-Man was my is still is my favorite superhero. The stories of, you know, nerdy kid getting power with great power comes great responsibility. Like the, everything about this character has been so important to me and my, you know, growing up as a human being on this planet and just knowing that there's an entire generation of kids whose Spider-Man is Miles, is this version of Miles, and the stories that they're telling and the the, the character development we had from Miles here is just, like, it's leaps and bounds over anything we've gotten from Peter Parker in any major media up until this point, for me at least. And I'm just, I'm so jealous of kids getting to grow up with this being their Spider-Man, and it's just, it's so good. Yeah, this is like, this is the Spider-Man at this point. Like, we've seen this kind of coming for a little bit if you follow comics like I do, where it's like, oh yeah, Miles is the interesting Spider-Man right now. Yeah. Miles yeah. is awesome. And Miles isn't even the high point of this movie for me. Like, I love Miles' story here. I love the canon events and that being the the big thing here. especially The, the catalyst for all of this, yeah. We'll get into why I love that in a little bit, because I, I have so many issues with the people who write Spider-Man sometimes. But for me, it's Gwen. Like, we've talked about this oh, time and time again when we talk about Marvel stuff. Like, my top, my three favorite characters, like, when it comes to Mar com Marvel Comics media right now, I am eating. Like, I love Miss Marvel, I love Kate Bishop, and I love Gwen Stacy. Like, the reason I am into comics as much as I am is because I bought an Edge of Spider-Verse comic back in, like, 2012 yep. that has Gwen on the cover. I have it here with me. I found it. This is what this is the reason I love comic books. Right here. I love this character. I held so this hold this character in such high regard for me. So to actually see this all come together in a way that people are loving this character. Like I love to see it. I love that her plot is done well. I love that her inner her relationship with Miles is done really well. How the betrayal her relationship with her dad feels. I was like, her relationship with Captain Stacy is just, like, it, it has you wanting to ball your eyes out. And, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I think, like, everything with Earth-65 just as a setting is, it absolutely nails the vibe of the comics. The fact that the colors are changing based on the emotions in the scene. Everything Even with her Peter, that, like, oh my god, style. it's heartbreaking. It's just, it, it's so good. That watercolor style is the style of the covers of some of those initial Spider-Gwen comic books. Which is yeah. one of the coolest art styles I've seen in a comic book cover. So actually seeing all of that here is just so damn beautiful. It is just so good. I love this stuff so much. Um, but also, like, this is essentially just a coming out story. When you really, like, look at it. Like, you see the bad, the worst possible way it can happen with Gwen revealing yeah. her identity to her oh, dad. Wow. And you're watching it how the, they talk to Miles, like, don't reveal your identity. Don't do it. And, and then the way it happens and then the realization as the audience. And I, so I went and saw this movie alone, which I don't do very often. And normally I've got my wife with me or friends or whatever. And I'll lean over and be like, oh my God, like I just had this realization. Did you realize this too? And I almost wanted to just lean to the couple sitting next to me like, oh my God, he's not on his earth. What the yeah. fuck? Okay. At what and point it's did just you guys like, realize? I, when she mentioned his hair. Cause oh, he had changed no. his hair. I realized I realized as soon as Gwen got into the room. Yeah, for like, me, right, it was just when, um, this... it was when Gwen took out um, Ben Riley. Because so it's like, oh, why wouldn't Miles have had to fight him? Also, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I figured, uh, yeah, I figured okay. Miles got there before they did. Yeah, so he was still looking for him. I might have that's been a little focused on uh, Miguel, Ben, and. Just at that point, but fair enough. Yeah, that's another awesome I, I, thing about this movie. I love that how it's just not focused on Peters. Like all of the main spiders in this aren't. 
aren't named Peter. It's Miguel, Jess, Bed, Miles, yeah. Glenn, Pavita. Like, it's just Which, so good. Hobby. I, I think it, it works in... Like, it works for this movie. Because we're trying to... Like, we all know the whole Peter story. We don't need to know. They make the joke where... Uh, Right before they all crash in the Peter in the therapist's office, where he's like, <laughs> and then your uncle died. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Like we, we don't need it, yeah. to see more Peter. We we need then, to see. But then we but then the we rest. do. And I think the way that they used the the canon events to be like, oh yeah, this is where we're gonna pull in all the archival footage of these movies we've been making for the last twenty years to get all this payoff, and it's just <laughs> like Oh, I love it, see, but also they do, they do the live action spying so dirty in this movie, and I love it. It's like, oh, we're going to make fun of the Marvel one, and we're going to show the other two's worst possible moments. Oh my god. Seeing Toby ugly cry in this movie. Do we, <laughs> like, Andrew gets it double. You have to watch it both more than Captain Stacy and also Uncle Ben. Yep, yep. Well, I, I think too, like the the idea of them being like, oh yeah, these canon moments, and this is the care, like this is the version of Spidey who's had to endure the most because of Captain Stacy and Uncle Ben, and it being Andrew Garfield Spider Man. It's like he gets that moment of like, this is why that character is so effed up in No Way Home, right? Like he's been through so much. It's so good, yeah. But can we talk about the other live action cameo for a second? Because I feel like we can't not talk about it. I mean, yeah, we got we got an M we got multiple MCU references in this movie, so let's talk about it. I don't think he. I, so he I don't Prowler think that was the MC. I I know, but I don't it. think that was the same Aaron Davis. I mean, oh, I'm it's got to be. Because if you use the actor I've, from the MCU, you're going to make the assumptions that it is. MCU. Yeah, but I mean, it could be from an adjacent universe that is still the same actor, but not the. Because if they wanted to make a, like, a version of him that is still the Prowler, but let's talk about it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's a fun, it's a fun cameo. I'm not really thinking much more of it, other than that. Well, for for me, it's the fact that like Donald Glover was the inspiration for Miles as a character in the comics, right? Yeah. Like he was the. He was the blueprint that they used to to make Miles a character in the comics. And then there was that whole internet thing of trying to get him cast as the MCU Spider-Man yep. as Miles rather than using Peter in the MCU. And like, kind of it's just a great little do a reference of like him actually just being a Spider-Man. But I mean, they did, like they did in that. Into the Spider-Verse. They did sort of. Um, there is in, in Into the Spider Verse. There's that scene from Community where he's waking up in the Spider Man shirt is on a TV in that movie. So like there yeah. is that reference to Donald Glover, you know. Oh wow, I totally forgot Spider Man adjacent. I know it's just like all these little things. Like I had to go and watch Into the Spider Verse again after seeing this because the number of Easter eggs for this movie that were already there and none of us saw it. It just it blows my mind. I cannot wait to go through this movie with a fine tooth comb. Yep. Like not my even TikTok just, feed is all this movie now, and I friggin' love I'm it. Here for it. Not even just like the the actual like Spider Society and going through them because I saw half a dozen characters. I was like, oh my god, you're actually showing them? Like, what the heck? I need to know more about that Canadian Spider Man in the parka with the <laughs> hockey stick. Like that isn't Dude, that isn't a character we know in the comics, and I just I need that to be a person because. Dude, I was loving that. Okay. I'm like, man, you just hit the stereotype perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The only way they could have stretched that further was that would be to have had that character been riding a polar bear that was also masked as a spider person. Oh, you mean like Web Slinger? Just like, like just like that Web was Slinger. That's one of the exactly. ones that I was shocked to see. Like Web Slinger's a weird spider, and it, again, another one of those first. We ones see him twice, came. don't we? Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he comes back and he's riding Web Slinger, right? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they have the, the duel and whatnot, but yeah, Web Slinger's one of those original comics, or one of those original Edge of Spider Verse spiders and then we also got sun spider which is the disabled yep. spider who is from the most recent spider-verse it was just like seeing those little things like that it's like oh my god because like when you think about it though this movie was being worked on in tandem with that most recent spider-verse like yep. that came out at the beginning of this year that is a very recent comic <laughs> so having those characters together was so awesome I mean, not even that, like when we see the when we see all the villains that have broken through and been these anomalies that they've been trying to put back, 
One of them looks eerily like the Craven the Hunter we're getting in Marvel Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac Games. And then, of course, there's also so like, Yuri. Well, and yeah, I mean, Yuri is there. Like, just the, the amount of fan service that exists here but doesn't... Like, usually when you get these fan service things, it takes away from the rest of the story. But ultimately, we've been talking about this. Like, this story of Gwen, Miles, and Miguel is fairly complete. I, I feel like Gwen's story is complete here and she is now the leader that she needs to be like she has a great arc like that character arc through this movie for her and miles specifically i think is the growth there is just awesome from what we got in the first movie there's so much more depth that we get from both of these characters and i just i'm I glad that the focus much. was there and on setting up miguel to i'm assuming you know sacrifice himself in some way in the last in the third movie I also love how much that they're, they very much are like, yeah, canon events are bullshit in this, uh, in this movie. Cause like Miles entire existence is says that canon events are bullshit. Yeah. Which I love, but we get this. One of my favorite moments in this movie is during the chase when Peter B is having the, that conversation with Miles of like, look, man, I wouldn't have this kid without you. This is an anomaly. We're not outright saying this is an anomaly, but like clearly it is. I didn't even put that to those two together, Griffin. Also, like, god damn, I love Mayday. God, I love well, that what, child. <laughs> what's crazy too with the, the whole anomaly thing around Miles, like, yeah, you've been an anomaly since the beginning. In into the Spider-Verse, those spider glitches. So, like, yeah. we know that spider isn't from his universe, but I never pieced that together until I saw this movie, which just blows my mind. Why would you piece it together? Yeah, you would have no reason. Uh, another, mm -hmm. we, it's just, it's all those little details, right, that really make this movie. Like, another yeah. one for me was with uh, The Spot, who is this dumb, like, cool-looking, cool powers villain, comics-wise. stealing that ATM is just the funniest thing. I love that Perfect. they made him go from dumb incompetent to absolutely terrifying yep and like spot is the kind of villain that like i would love to see spot in a spider-man video game because those powers are so unique and so weird that you could do cool i mean it's it. but like it's possible right because especially with insomniac with the rift apart technology that they yeah, um, exactly. i say technology but like the rift apart stuff that they did with the Ratchet power Tank. of the ssd man but, like spots from brand new day and spot doesn't talk at all of it like spot does not have any dialogue when he first appears in the comics so like actually making getting to have this blank slate to make this character who also just looks really cool in this i love how you kept the uh how they kept the the drawing lines for him him and uh, especially yeah, once well. he gets the collider energy and it's like He's breaking apart inside of himself, and it's just, oh man, it's so good. But again, one of the little about... things with it, like you see the tip, you see the two, you see two different versions of Spot before the Collider in this film. Of you see it in his version, and then you see an actual picture of him, and it's the funniest thing to me that he looks significantly better looking in his version than the actual yeah. picture. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> It's, just, it's little it's little details that really make this stuff amazing. I did want to just bring up the probably the greatest five seconds of this movie, which is the Lego universe. Dude, I was just gonna say the same thing. Dude, animated by a Oh man. Movie. It was perfect. And uh, everybody's been pointing out like the one constant in all the spider universes is j jonah jameson jk simmons being j yep. jonah jameson he is the, he is the anchor throughout the spider verse really and i as he should freaking love it constant. it's hilarious yep. every time too like it does not matter what universe it's in doesn't it's matter so it's it's perfect it's one of those things where like when like i mean people get old and pass away so like when harrison ford passes away i don't think there's another ki another actor alive that can or should play indiana jones because that role is just so oh, iconically yeah. Harrison Ford. J. Jonah Jameson should be in nothing after J.K. Simmons passes away, just because there's no other actor that can bring that same energy to that role. Yeah. yeah that's fair. Who plays uh, Who plays Jonah in uh, the Spider-Man games? Jonah. It's a I mean, J question. oh. I know it's not J.K. Simmons. I said, I said Jonah. <laughs> Jonah. Triple, yeah. 
But um, I, mean, I would love to see that. Obviously, we'll see a thousand different versions of Triple J by the time we're all dead and gone. But having yeah. him, constantly having him here is good. And like actually getting to see him in a Spider-Man movie is always wonderful. Because this movie does not need Jonah to appear in any way, shape, or form. There's but not. it's still good. Uh, it Darren us DePaul. Around. Darren DePaul voices him in the in the video game. Yeah, because that he's a great Jonah as well. Yes. yes. Also, kind of terrifying that he's going to be owning the Daily Bugle in Spider Man too. But read the Spider Man. That's that. That's series. a problem for when we do a spoiler cast of that video game. Oh yeah, it must be nice. Um... <laughs> <laughs> if we do it. No, I want to talk about Gwen Zamora because obviously, like, that's where my focus is. On this, I'm wearing a Spider Gwen shirt. I have my Gwen comic. I got my Gwen figurine behind me. Like, I love this damn character. We know it was. That was kind of the the full circle, like, like story arc in this because we have a Miles obviously ends his story halfway through. Presumably, part two is going to end Miles' story and probably tell another Spider story. If I had to guess, it would probably be Miguel, or it could be. More Gwen Miles. I'd be happy with whatever they give us next year. But yeah, the, it was everything with her dad. Like the that one that was... got me initially was him being like, "Are you too punk rock to give your dad a hug?" And she just and immediately, it. yep. It's like, oh my god, so sweet. And then the actual like arrest moment was like heartbreaking. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it it tears you down. Mm-hmm. And then built you right back up at the end. Yeah, thankfully. Um, we got a few other spiders to talk about, though. There's, there's a lot of spiders in this movie. And if there's anyone we got I have to talk a, about. I have a list if you want me to go through it. Oh, I've got them all memorized. I've seen this movie three times now. <laughs> oh, God, I just pulled up Wikipedia, and they have, uh, like, 19 or 20 different spiders. Oh, I don't have all those. I just have the major ones. I want to talk about hobby. I want to talk about spider punk. <laughs> that was the dick. The one character I honestly only understood every other three words that that came out of I think that was the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, when he, uh, for me, uh, which I found really interesting at first, obviously, is when he's like, um, telling Miles to like use his palm. The one person to actually support Miles out of all everything, and then when they finally start giving him chase, he's just like, "Yeah, by the way, I quit." Yeah, and then make. But I Project just like Bootleg. I love I I love how the whole time he was going through and like giving his whole spiel, and they were having the back and forth with him and Miguel when they first get there. He's just like pocketing a whole bunch of tech, and like no one's calling him out on any of it, and it's yeah. just so he could build that watch at the end. So like he's not just this anarchist anti-establishment punk rock spider guy he's he's got that same brilliant mind that all the other spider people tend to share and it's just it's great to see both sides of the character and not just the you know anti-establishment side he does have a couple of like absolutely hilarious like a couple of my favorite lines in this one liners are from him like particularly when they're looking down on the void in mumbatton and he says um it's a metaphor for capitalism (laughs) That broke me. And then the other one I have noted that was so good to me was him with Mayday. Where he's like, oh, yeah. taking a crap on the authority. Respect. I like it. Yeah. And like, this kid's a anarchist. Like, just his little comments here and there were so funny to me. And like, yeah, the accent is thick as hell. I'm concerned that I'm able to understand what he was saying. I think I have talked to British people too much to understand exactly what he's saying at every or, moment. Or you've just watched too much British television. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think I think for me, yeah, the stand the, the the standouts here just in turn it was interesting too coming to this movie. You know, you expect to see Peter B. Parker again, Spider Man Noir, Spider Ham, these characters that had a role in the first one, and we really don't apart from Peter B. Um, we get like the the cameos throughout or just at the end there. Uh, I love the focus on uh, Spider-Woman, Spider-Man India and Spider-Punk in this film. Like, I feel like they got, they, 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 were, they brought this fresh perspective. Like those other Spider-Man were, it was okay. It was fun. It was, you know, it was Nick Cage doing a full Nick Cage, but here you got, you know, a very, very unique portrayal of Mubatten with, uh, Spider-Man India, and I just I loved everything about that world, and just 
the animation, like the, just the animation changes throughout the different universes and how it affects the other characters when they enter those. You know, it's just the, it's, this well, is a Spider-Man, masterclass just in animation. Spider-Man India in particular is one I was super excited about because the original Spider-Man India, at least the way they did it initially in Spider-Verse, because uh, I know they're putting out a new Spider-Man India comic line fairly soon, um, is essentially just a reskin of Peter. Of like, yeah. there, He doesn't really have any characterizing things about him and so actually getting to see him in this one and like he is the happy-go-lucky spider everything's perfect for him he's kind of hilariously naive he's only been at this for six months like really getting to have him be his own character and have again some hilarious one-liners this whole bit of at the spot is, um, don't eat pray love me was yeah. so good the chai tea thing was great it's like why would you say that why would you say chai tea that's just saying tea tea you're calling it tea tea just saying chai and then he does it again with non <laughs> it's like would you ask for a coffee coffee with room for cream cream just like oh had me in stitches yeah i that was one of the ones where my theaters were popping off the most for that was one of that was that joke yeah, yeah. The theater experience for this one was insane. I don't think I have seen a theater pop off that hard at the end of a film in a long time. There were audible gasps and screams in my showing of just people did not want it to end. And for a movie that is two and a half hours long that I saw at 930 at night after playing a bunch of softball that day and being incredibly tired and was very happy to see the end credits. Uh, to have this many people sitting in a theater not want it to end just goes to show how powerful this story is and how far it's going to go once we get to this, the culmination of this phenomenal animated trilogy. Yeah, worth noting for what it's worth, by the way, this is the longest animated film ever made by an American studio. Good. Which, man, I really hope they top that next year. I hope it's longer. I could watch this stuff for like five hours straight. <laughs> I mean, was you ex- will, because eventually we'll have the supercut of all three movies, and I'm just, I cannot wait to just have ex- all of these at home, get a bigger TV just because, to be able to sit my ass in front of and watch all of these back to back to back. Wouldn't that be great? Mm-hmm. I love this. And like, worth reminding y'all, again, we also do have a spinoff in development for this. There is a yeah. female fo- female spider focused spinoff in development, which hey, I, give us I a looked it movie. up. Uh, I want to say yes. I looked it up yesterday, and I think I saw that it was focusing on uh, uh, Jessica Drew. I'd love but that it. could just be speculation. I mean, I mostly just wanted them to get Silk in it because Silk rocks. That's another fantastic spot. Oh, show. yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for that. <laughs> There's a lot of good. Or get Anya. Get Anya is another amazing spider. Or have MJ. Wasn't, weren't, weren't there rumors that Sony was developing a live action Silk film? There was rumors for that. Yeah. That was like. And I guess most of those rumors have turned out to be true, right? We got Venom, we got Morbius, we're getting Craven. But that was like Adam right Webb. alongside there with like the Aunt May film they were rumored to be making. So could happen still. Yeah. Well, whether or not you want it to happen is like your opinion. Yeah, man, but... the, the yeah so Amy Pascal's stuff. come out and said that the the Spider Woman spinoff would focus on Gwen Stacy, Cindy Moon, aka Silk, and Jessica Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. More Silk. As it should be. Now just get Anya in there and uh, get Spider Girl in there, dude. Her in the yeah. comics is fantastic for what it's worth because she's essentially now just Doctor Strange Spider Man. Nah. It's great. I love it. I love comic books, y'all. It's so fun. I love this movie. Um, we we'll talk. Let's talk some more about the music because God, the soundtrack for this, like, not even just the actual score for this movie, which is fantastic and amazing, but the actual like licensed music that they have for this on par yeah. if not better than the first film for me i think it's much better than the first film that's just me see i i felt like the first film had more memorable tracks for me mm-hmm. as a not very well ver- like my musical tastes are all still stuck in the 80s and 90s to be perfectly fair so like for me hearing new music is like oh okay yeah some things will catch most things won't and I feel like something like Sunflower has stuck with me over the years. I didn't really have a moment like that here, but I still mm-hmm. think in terms of the quality of the tracks, I think it was, yeah, it was phenomenal. Yeah. And like Griffin said earlier, like the score for these two movies is just going into a playlist that I'm going to have on a repeat for, I don't know, the next two to three decades. 
in particular, it's just that good. The score for at the beginning of the film when they are fighting Vulture, like that. Dude, that Renaissance Vulture, the animation there, like the paper craft, was so cool. Dude, I loved it every time. Like he would like wind up for an attack and it would show like the calculations of the curse of writing and then it would attack it just the things you can do with animation are so cool yes that's why i don't feel like uh, talking about the spot and thinking oh yeah this villain would be interesting to see show up in other places i feel like apart from maybe games there really isn't a good like we talked about this before the movie came out griffin of animation was the perfect way to ye- leverage that character of oh yeah you can just do so much weird shit with it in animation that you really can't do elsewhere which i think lends itself to a lot of the characters we saw here like i couldn't see spider-man india working in live action because i feel like the color and the pop and the line work that we had in that world was just so beautiful and it wouldn't have the same well, impact that, if it like weren't is, in general as an idea would not work in live action and that's one of my favorite yeah. things about animated superhero stuff is animated superhero stuff can really be real to the bombastic side of these characters. Like, yeah, you can you get roughly the same when it comes to the actual like emotional depth, those inner character moments. But you're not going to get that scene between Gwen and Miles sitting um, underneath, technically, that one building, looking out, having that heart-to-heart, and having what is to me an on par shot with him initially jumping off that building and having that supposed to like make you remember, I forget what the actual term terminology for things is, but have you think about that moment when looking at this one, you don't get that in live action. You never will get that in live action. So animation has this such super unique power that you just can't have there. And you kind of have to remember, though, it also, like, in certain points of this, like, oh, my God, they're making all of this. These backgrounds are all hand handmade. This is really cool. <laughs> the amount of different animation styles in this is just wild. Yeah, I, I think I read somewhere that something like a thousand people ended up working on this movie by the end of it. And it shows just with the amount of unique perspective brought to these different locales characters worlds it's just it i can't believe something like this got made let alone is this fucking good like it it shouldn't work but it does and it's amazing yeah i like y'all know if you listen to this show i watch a lot of movies like i pride myself in seeing almost everything that comes out in theaters in a year so I, wait we're gonna go see transformers next weekend and talk about that we're not gonna talk about it but we can go see it I just yes. mentioned in general, we'll just oh, chat. Oh, in general, and yeah. Of course, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, hey, if y'all want a Transformers episode, let us know. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I try to see everything in theaters because that's what I love to do. This skyrocketed the first. This skyrocketed to my favorite thing of the year. And I can't see a single thing coming out this year being better for me than this. Like, it just, it hits every point it needs to, even though it is a part one. Like, I feel like making this a part one and the ending it the way they did was super risky. Like leaving the theater today, I had some kids sitting next to me, which also gotta hate kids at theater. Um, I don't hate small children. This is I why hate, I go I to the specific. nineteen plus theater. It is great. I specifically hate these kids from like the range of like twelve to fifteen. That are just absolute douchebags. I hate these children. Because this one kid's yeah, on his phone I, for the entire last 20 minutes and then says he hates the ending of the movie. So, but... Yeah, I really way. I really didn't want to see this in a general admission theater, but I ended up doing it because I ended up, like, knowing we were recording this today, I'm like, all right, when is the literal next showing to right now? I'm like, all right, I got 20 minutes to make it to the movies. Let's go. Seriously, that was um, me. That but I think, I, think like, I still want to see this at least twice more. I want to see it once in a 19-plus theater where I can just kind of lean back, know that I'm surrounded by a bunch of adults that are going to appreciate the movie for what it is. And then I have to see this in IMAX because I yeah, feel like you do. this just needs to be seen on the biggest screen imaginable with the best sound. That's how I saw it Thursday. I, and it, it is unbelievable. I saw it in Dolby and it was just like just fantastic. I, I think uh, I've so also bad. heard that. Say it again. I want to see this in Dolby so bad. Yeah, I, I, I also heard. 
I also heard that Dolby might have the better uh, sound mixing. Yeah, the yeah, I heard, I heard there were issues with the IMAX sound mixing. Two yeah. out of three of my films were be- were fine. IMAX was great. IMAX was actually really good. Um, the okay. second time I saw it in theaters sound. was I started to have the problems everyone else was. I was like, oh man, I can barely hear the dialogue in this. And then the one today was like, oh no, that's fine. I can hear everything. Okay. Still can't understand a word the spider that uh, Spider Punk says, but that's yeah, of course. I think that's more just the characterization <laughs> than the actual sound mixing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's funny too because like I, you, you and I have talked about this on more than one occasion, Griffin. Where I, I always said like, I know that this movie is probably going to be my favorite movie of the year, and now as of now, it's probably my favorite movie of all time. But for me, I knew what I was getting from it just from the trailers and how I felt about the first movie. I still think there's going to be something that comes out this year that I'm more surprised by from the theatrical film experience um, where I might not have expected it. I'm still, you know, I'm holding out hope for the Marvels, but I really, I'm really curious to see what that new haunted mansion is like, because I know like the expectations aren't there the way they were for this movie. But I think there's a lot of things that are still to come this year that are going to surprise some people. But yeah, I think at the end um, of the day, this is still going to end up my favorite movie of the year. There's certainly other things I think have been already have been more surprising for me this year. Um, particularly, it's not superhero related or Disney related, but there's a movie that came out called How to Blow Up a Pipeline that surprised the crap out of me with how good it is. Um, highly, highly recommend it. Also, I'm still, don't I'm still, I don't, I don't know what I'm expecting when I go to that theater, sit down for. Christopher Nolan's first R-rated film since 2002, which was just announced today. And I just, that double feature of Barbie and Oppenheimer is going to be a really, really weird day. Like Barbie. Uh, There is a theater. There are two theaters that are within driving distance of me that will have the 70 millimeter IMAX film. And I feel like I have to see that movie that way. Because it's like, it's like 18 miles long or something insane like that. I got it right here. I got a, I got an issue. Movie industry. There are other places on the West Coast other than California. You don't need <laughs> six theaters in California. You could put one in Washington, Oregon. Please. <laughs> Please. There's like six showings in California and none up here. I don't want to go all the way to California to watch this in 70 millimeter. I might. Now, hear, but that hear, is beside hear me point. out, Griffin. Hear me out. That's an expensive You've been flight. looking for an excuse to come to Toronto. There are theaters in Toronto adjacent. They're going to be showing this in 70 millimeter IMAX. I'm just saying. The IMAX film thing. prints are 11 miles long and weigh 600 pounds. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. I saw an interesting thing while we were talking about this to bring it back to like some of the crazy art in this. Is a lot of the... Um, a lot of the coloring for Gwen stuff was mm-hmm. specifically inspired by Cinderella, particularly the color changes in her dress. Interesting. Yeah. Which is I, I, I also cool. saw, I kind of felt that with the uh, ballerina shoes in the beginning. Like, for, I don't know, for some reason it, it spoke to me like, oh, that's, that's. But it was essentially like um, Gwen's world essentially operates like a mood ring for her, which yeah. is yeah. so cool. Again, like that that hand painted style is just so beautiful. Pretty good. I I could talk about that specifically for ages. Um, trying to think about what else there is to talk about though in this film. We talked about India. We talked about punk. Ben a little bit. Ben is hilarious. It, God, that animation looks so good. And it, it's funny too because he doesn't have much dialogue, but when he gets that monologue on. Uh, Miles Earth. I'm just like, it clicked in my brain. I'm like, oh my God, it's Jake Sully. Like, how did I not put this together earlier? How am I so blind? Andy Samberg doing his best Andy Samberg, and I totally whiffed on it. So good. Um, Fantastic. Oh, also, Earth 688. We got the convenience store lady from Venom. That was funny as all oh, too. God. That was hilarious. That was so great. I, I saw this gum right here. Like, come on, that was great. I'm so happy I you s- were the one to bring this up, bitch. 
I saw that and I was like, oh no, come on. Like, we were doing so great. Don't bring it back to the, your Look, shitty universe. The only thing universe. that could have made it better was, have to have, was actually to have Tom Hardy in the scene. But No, I think no. this was better. No. I'm saying it was purely to annoy, uh, to annoy Ruben. For what Tom Hardy will be in Beyond the Spider-Verse. I can guarantee you that. Mitch, in case you didn't know, I have a pure hatred for Tom Hardy. He really oh, I know. We've talked about this before on the okay. show, I believe. So okay. I'm okay just leaning into it now. He's a menace to society and he needs to be stopped. I mean, he's I, been in some great films. Again, we will be doing a Venom He just hasn't movie. been great in it. <laughs> no, but he's been in great films. <laughs> Look, um, he, his, his, his acting in Venom 2 is downright hilarious. Is and that's not what we need. necessarily a good not thing. What we need. That's Look, not, that movie not, is legitimately a comedy, and I will stand by that. Okay. I need to mention two things. Yes. One, Spider Rex. They actually put Spider Rex in a goddamn Spider Man movie, and what the what? I have props prepared, Mitch. I'll be right back. Give me one. Okay. Time. There is precedent yeah. for this character, and I love it. There is, which is <laughs> scary to me. The second one, Peter Parker. We got the Spider Mobile in this movie, which you also had a goddamn prop for. Are you <laughs> kidding me right now? Dude, I have like every Edge of Spider Verse comic. I've been over this with you. <laughs> Come on, you want to go three for three? Uh, I can't go three for three. We've shown all the comic books I have next to me at this moment. <laughs> well, the th the third one is the one we will probably. I mean, we we've mentioned, but Sometimes no, there? spectacular. Oh. We got four foot nothing spectacular Spider Man with dialogue in this movie, and the Multiple fact that they brought back it's just oh. like he was they the first one to show Uncle the death of Uncle Ben, and they deliver, and I love it. Yeah, and I love that. Like, if you know uh, spectacular, you pop off for that. But the 100%. people that didn't were like, "Oh, I'm still invested in this character." What? They're just invested in the movie at that point, which I think is just it it goes to show like you can cater to an audience that has that built in understanding of the thing you're trying to present to them. But other people are just in because it's another Spider-Man that's cool and different. And I love it because I have I love everything about this. I need to I need to go see it again. I want to shout out another fantastic uh, Spider-Verse spider, which is Spintress, who is literally just a Disney princess. <laughs> But Spider Man, <laughs> like Mitch, was that Ursula? Mitch, she sings her dialogue. Of course she does. Is is that Maleficent as the Green Goblin? Um, pretty much. Yeah, it's the the Gob Mother. Um, and then that is Doctor Octopus. Okay, yeah, that that tracks. Um, I love comic books. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many, no many, so many fun Spider-Man Easter eggs that are like, oh yeah, I recognize Last Stand Peter Parker from a skin in the Spider-Man video game. It's cool that it's here. Last Stand. It didn't mean anything more to me than that. Man, but... we got. Yeah. We got the which is just Spider-Man Spider in a in a in a bag and a Fantastic Four outfit, which I think is just great. Yeah, which they had to take the four off of, but of course they did because right. Well, we, if you know, you know. Mm -hmm. But we got other ones like Manga Spider-Man, which I always love to see. Cause it's just a weird looking Spider-Man. We saw Spider-Man Unlimited yeah. with this stupid ass cape. That was awesome. I popped off for that. My whole theater kind of looked at me like I was insane, which I get. But like I popped off for that. And we got other ones like I mentioned, like Sun Spider and um, Web Slinger. But we got like Steampunk Spider-Woman in this, which it's only for a little bit. But it's still such a cool looking spider. We yeah, got Captain Flash Thompson, Spider, Captain. Spider Wolf. Spider Cat, like oh man, so many. Like they really, they really nailed it when it came to that stuff. And I think they did a really good job of balancing both that stuff as well as the characters we know and love. Like showing us Penny in that moment of sadness, also getting to actually see Penny in the legit in the um, new suit that she should be in. Um, yeah, super cool. But like having her pop up in that moment of like just to really hammer this point home for Miles was so well done. Ruben, are you drinking a Capri Sun? I am. <laughs> okay, well now I have to quiz you on this. What's the flavor? I'm going to judge you harshly. What do you think the flavor is? I know. I, I mean, I, I haven't had a Capri Sun. In I didn't know there were different flavors of Capri Sun. 
to be fair, because I haven't okay. had one in like 20 years. Well, this is fruit punch. Okay, good. Okay. But my favorite is uh, kiwi strawberry. Okay, you're allowed to continue on this podcast then, just so you know. Good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought Capri said I had to derail. <laughs> It's Anyone okay. who's listening to this and not watching this one, what were these props they talked about, and what is Ruben <laughs> drinking? Like, what? I said Capri Sun. <laughs> yeah, why not? Look, we just apparently we just hate audio listeners, even though like we've been on audio significantly longer than video. <laughs> no, we love everyone who's here hanging out and talk. So, I just want to like to go back to the movie. I just want to know, like, off the top of your head. What is your favorite scene that we got in this movie? Oh, God. I'll throw it to you first, Ruben, because I think like Griffin just had a brain aneurysm. Oh, dear God. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, coming from, uh, you know, Hispanic descent, I have to say the my favorite scene was uh, his mom and his mom's speech at the uh, underneath at the, the water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Perfect. really good. Yeah, there's a couple of things she said when um when she interrupts uh, Miles and Gwen. I got a little too real. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the best mom moment we've ever had captured on film. I think. Yep. I mean, Real Morales just is like me. top ten, if not the best fictional mother in all of fiction. So yes, absolutely. Everything she, that came out of her mouth, my fiance just looked at me and she's like. Uh, the face uh, is just like, yeah, I've heard this before. Where have I heard this before? <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is my mom's. <laughs> all right, Griffin, what about you? I mean, I mean, after talking all of us about Gwen, right? But it's that moment with her dad, with Man. when he says he's quitting. Like, there's a few Spider Spider Woman moments I could pick there. Like, I also really love her moment with the uh, the helicopter, and watching it, yeah. like. What her thinking of sp the the drumsticks spinning and whatnot, but mm -hmm. no, it's that emotional yeah, that moment cool. with her dad for me, which is like one of my favorite moments in the entire film. Of I think I, I think the thing up, for I'm me sorry, that just kid. that that whole that whole opening of Earth sixty five is is as good as it is that I didn't even realize we hadn't gotten to a title sequence yet when it ended, and that was like twenty five minutes into the movie, like oh right, this hasn't started yet. Oh my <laughs> god, yeah, it's just. Everything about that world is so good. I would love a movie that literally is just that world. I I know we're never gonna get that. I, this is this this franchise is about significantly more than just Gwen, but to actually get the but character for you, that is that is your franchise, and we mm -hmm. get it. We yeah. it, it's great that people can find moments in this that aren't Miles, that aren't Peter, that everyone has that that connection to this web of characters that is just uniquely theirs like for me again like growing up on all these different incarnations of peter and knowing that kids are now growing up where it is gwen that they relate to it is miles it is i mean, I mean that's really it. um yeah. but no it's just it's it's really nice to see you know i've always been able to see myself reflected in peter as this nerdy kid growing up uh and it's great that kids are now growing up with other versions of this character that have similar flaws and similar you know similar challenges to overcome but you know are better reflections of the more diverse world that we're all trying to you know build up and matters. and and make more prominent as as things go on so i'm, I'm just i'm i'm just happy yeah on that note I this do movie makes me happy is, Mitch, but on that note in one of my show weddings i saw the sweetest thing of this little boy dressed up as spider gwen and it was like full costume half the biggest smile i've ever seen on a kid's face like he was just God. so happy to be dressed up as this character seeing this movie and i mean i saw that on pretty much every kid i saw there like kids dressed up as gwen as miles as peter like regardless of who they are just loving these characters and i i love love seeing that it's something really special about major franchises like spider-man now mitch you made me question my entire reality with this question. What was your favorite moment? For me, it's the the conversation between Miguel and Miles on the train of him real like you think I don't have a plan. I had a plan. I've got I've had a plan this whole time and just knowing like he's becoming like his own like the best version of himself and not just, you know, this scared kid who's having to take on this responsibility like he he 
he, he has a, a purpose. He has a, a driving force and he wants to, you know, break away from these conventions. He doesn't want to lose his dad. And like all of that coming together in that moment of him being like, no, I, I got this. And he just like that. It's that for me, that train scene is the jump away moment from the first movie of like, that is when miles becomes the character he needs to be to see out the rest of the, the story, which of course we're not getting the rest of the story until the next movie, which is sad, but also at least for those of us who knew this was a part one of two, it wasn't entirely on I Like we're building towards this climax. I'm like, okay, yeah, here's the empire moment of it's going to end. It's the halo two moment of people are going to be mad. And then the next one's going to come out, blow all of those people's socks off. And don't forget that there was a cliffhanger. Um, but yeah, for me, for me, it's that, that train scene and just the, the back and forth, the, the quippy quippiness of it. The dialogue is just so good between Shamik Moore and, uh, Oh, why is my brain farting right now? Come on, you got it. He's a major Oscar actor. Isaac. There you go. I got it. 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 Okay, we've brought up two interesting things that I like to talk about here. Uh, first off is um, Miles' parents. The the acting between them and the dialogue between them is some of the funniest the stuff in this entire movie. Like, yeah, them being pissed. That at scene Miles with and... them and Gwen is probably my favorite. That like the parent moments at the water tower are one thing. That whole scene is just oh my god, it's. It's an equal times hilarious and heartbreaking. But, like, I love the bits of, like, them in the actual conference and, like, them getting mad at him for having the, the B in Spanish and them him talking about, like, what he wants to do and his dad backing him up of, like, yep, yep, I have no idea what he's talking about anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, or, like, he literally says, like, yeah, sounds like a real cool fake job. Like, no, it's a real job. He knows that. He's just going to give his kid shit. Uh, yeah, he's got to agree with his mother because if not, he's the one that's going to get in trouble. But the, the best Five one I months, saw was right? when he was like, yeah, t- I studied for nine months. It was like being pregnant. It's like, no, it's not. It's like, yep, okay, understood. I will stop. <laughs> like just, you could feel the relationship between these two characters and it was done in such a like fun way that we really didn't get to see much of in the first one. I feel like the first one really focused in on, focused in on Miles' relationship with his dad. So getting yeah. to see this much more of Rio and like Mario is the one who runs this family. Just perfect. And then having the little quirks, like they hate it when Miles' friends sit, call them by their first names. Yep. <laughs> Which felt too real. Yep. Yeah. I, I also love the idea of subverting expectations. Like that is Miles' whole driving thing of like these expectations are being set for him and he's not about it and is going to find ways around it. Granted, will that destroy the multiverse? I don't know. Uh, but but at this point, I'm just more invested in seeing what he's able to change because he's been an agent for change since he got bit, right? Like everything has been a variance from that point forward. And it's just, it'll be interesting to see how they subvert our expectations. Like you expect his dad to die. Will he die? I don't know. Because don't at this point, they're doing what they can with this story of changing the narrative of rewriting the narrative. And it'll be interesting to see how the events of this next movie unfold with that being the driving force of this character. Yeah. I mark my words. Like we're going to get to the second movie, right? The events are going to happen. We're not going to, he's not going to die. Miguel is going to be there. See that he doesn't die and see that everything is totally fine. And it's going to make him question everything. <laughs> Or it's just going to have him sacrifice himself for the greater good of the Spider-Verse. And he'll call it the Spider-Verse and they'll have a wink-wink moment where he then goes and sacrifices himself for the greater good of whatever he has to do. Some spider has to die. <laughs> now, I think we got, we've got we got really cool things. But we've been t- I, I'm proud of us, Mitch. I'm very proud of us. We've talked for almost an hour here. And not once have we talked about like the actual ending of this movie. <laughs> We have done well. We didn't just jump straight to the end like we always do. But Miles I mean, coming kind of did. I the first when we I asked done a major spoiler, the first thing he said, said was yeah. to be continued. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm yeah. talking about Miles meeting meeting himself face to face. Okay, and like meeting the Prowler in that world in this like there it was no Spider Man here, seeing everything just fucked up. Which it sounded like it was a different uh, voice actor. It was. Uh, okay. It wasn't Shamik Moore. It was. Uh, I had it up, and then I lost it. Uh, b- b- 
Why can't I find it very quickly? Casually, quietly. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Jarell uh, Jerome. Uh, who previously had roles in Moonlight and When They See Us. <laughs> yeah, Miles G. Morales, for what it's worth, is that character. Which I find it funny. I like how we have Peter B. Peter Parker, B. Parker and Miles G. Morales. But yeah, that it's moment with like, like we all knew who it was when he comes down. Like we all knew it was Miles. But yep. even still, seeing like the the mask come off and seeing Miles' face was still. I didn't expect that moment. You didn't? I didn't expect I, to see I, him. So I expected him when we see the Prowler knock Miles out, and it's not Aaron. At that point, I fully expected it to be Miles. But there's actually, again, my TikTok feed being overrun with all the spoilers of this movie. When he has that flashback moment when the spot is showing him his future and the past, when the spider is taken out of Earth 42's universe, it was about to fall on that Miles' hand. So, like, Miles oh. in that universe was meant oh. to be Spider Man. It just it didn't happen because the spider ended up in another universe. That is pretty interesting. interesting. Yeah, I really, I really, and I do, that. I do feel like this version of Miles will be redeemed before the end of that movie because he was meant to be a hero in the on this Earth. So like, he will still end up being this Earth's Spider-Man, but it'll just be without powers and it'll just be as proud with great responsibility. Exactly. Right, he'll lose his uncle because yeah, yeah. He or he'll he lose already, someone that is. Well, I mean, he's already lost his dad, right? He's already lost his on captain. Earth. Now he needs to yep. lose his uncle. So yeah. if we want to go run by the rules of canon which again i think are stupid i see i feel like by the end of this movie the rules of canon are getting blown out the window i mean the, yeah obviously like again miles's whole existence says that canon laws are dumb well that's the argument i've been having with people who didn't like this movie are like well why didn't his universe immediately fall apart and my answer to that was the spot's existence in his universe is the event that is going to cause that that universe to fall apart right so it just it's gonna fall apart it hasn't happened yet and he's gonna try to stop it yeah god the spot looks so cool at the end like that black like seeing him when it like it fills the screen of like this black ooze essentially coming off of him yeah so dope it was it was funny too because like when the i think it was ari arad um or avi arad i can't remember the the spider-man producer's name who's done like everything ever um, pitched the spot as the main villain to Lord and Miller. And at first they were like, nah. But then when they thought more about his powers and how it would it interact with the idea of this multiversal story, they were all on board. And like they've taken what was a joke character, like he was a villain of the week at the beginning of this movie. And he is incredibly menacing and a serious threat to the entire multiverse by the end of it, which I think is just so cool. Yeah, it's just, it's really great watching this character. Like, actually, like, it's seeing his motivations essentially just be, yeah, he called me villain of the week and I want to prove him wrong. Like, he did this to me. I want my revenge was the initial. Now it's like, okay, well, now there's just a little bit of fuck you sprinkled into the mix. It very much had the, okay, this is going to be a weird way to connect these two things, but this movie felt at times a lot like Lego Batman in terms of the the villain plot of in that movie the joker is just like i am your nemesis call me your nemesis tell me you hate me and the 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 banter between miles and the spot in this is kind of the same vibe of you know you're my nemesis you create i created you you created me we're bound to each other and it's it's funny how that ends up working out where they have this relatively unknown spider-man villain of the week be the catalyst for this version of Miles to be the best version of himself in a way that, you know, we've had that with Spider-Man and Green Goblin in the past, Batman and the Joker, Iron Man and alcohol. Like, it's it's Jeez. just one of those things. And it's 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 really interesting here how they use the spot for that with here, Miles here rather than... You really <laughs> stuck not there expecting the, the Iron Man one, and alcohol. Right? Like, I, 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 I'm sorry, I couldn't think of another one. <laughs> I mean, Iron Man's villain was the Mandarin, and there was a lot of issues with that. <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I went to the booze. Fair, great, great. I do great appreciate that. I do appreciate that he is first called the villain of the week, 
but eventually he turns into like he said his greatest enemy <laughs> yeah and he accepts it too like like yep. yeah, he's my nemesis you see it in Mumbatan that he he's accepted it because he doesn't want him to grab the uh, I was gonna say particle accelerator, but that's the lighter energy lighter. thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm realizing. But then also the fact that his origin is like the the fact that they tied it back to a dude getting hit in the face by the bagel as they were leaving the lab in the first movie, and that actually happened in the day. Like, the, look. Well, here's I the thing. Here's the thing. Mitch. How bagels, are they this good at making knows. movies? I don't get it. As everyone knows, Wish bagels are like the icon of the multiverse. So, there's a reference to everything everywhere all at once if you haven't seen that movie. I understood that reference. <laughs> um, I just realized that there's one spider we actually haven't talked about yet that is here and is probably going to play a fairly large role in the next one, which is Spider Bite. A little uh, weird that she Peter is Park like Car. on that team. If I'm being we honest. talked about Peter Park Car while you were away. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And Car. Griffin had a. Griffin had a problem. Yep. yep. He again. showed me before the. Yep. yep. There he is. That's exactly I what I needed to say. Would you be surprised yeah, yeah, to know that this character teams up with Miles Morales in that Spider Verse? Spider Bite. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Not at all. But yeah, Spider Bite. Like, I really like this character, right? That's like this virtual reality Spider Man or Spider Woman, and whatnot. So it's base. She's basically it's like Ready Player One, but she's a spider person. Yeah, it's your work from home spider. But yeah, it's it's cool. I can't wait to see more of her. A little weird that she's on that team, but like, you know, with this many characters, I, I understand why you can't super flesh out a character. You kind of need it. I did yeah. love her moment, though, of like when she realizes that the machine's not broken, that Miles is in there and she's like, OK, I'm going to let this I'm gonna let this play out. <laughs> I can and press it played out the weirdest could... way of like, okay, so I guess the spider changed his DNA enough that it recognized the other Earth as his prime Earth. But then why does he not glitch on his Earth, but he does glitch on this Earth, even well, though he has I... DNA from this? It doesn't make sense. I assume that it But it doesn't have to because it's a movie. Yeah. yeah. So we come down to it. Let's look at like the, the, this last, this ending team, right, of... Um... Pretty much everyone from this one. So, yeah, Peter B., uh, Pa, Hobie, Gwen, and then uh, Spider Bite. But then also, oh, yeah, and, and Mayday, of course. But then also Spider Man Noir. Team one team, or movie one team. Yeah, Spider Man Noir, which my theaters popped off for seeing Nick Nick Cage's character come back. Even though Nick Cage everyone wants movie. Nick Cage, what can I say? But there's also, yeah, him, Penny, and Spider Ham going into this. Like, we kind of have, like, these different planes, right? Like, we're going to have, obviously, the Miles, Miles story. We're going to have the the band story. I'm calling them the band from now on because uh, of Gwen's comments. Um, mm -hmm. And then whatever Miguel's up to. I don't know what's going to happen next. Like, we have a rough idea of what some of the story points are going to hit, but I have no idea what's going to happen next, so that makes me so excited. Yes, absolutely. I can't wait. March can't come fast enough. So we're gonna need a trailer like tomorrow for this new movie, so we can be hyped about that still. Otherwise, really? I'm to... No, I'm just saying. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Shit. No, we need a, We need a, We need a trailer though for this next one as soon as possible. Otherwise, I'm just gonna yeah. see this movie another ten times in theaters. I say, I put mean, it that's in... what they want you to do though. So you're not gonna get a trailer probably until the Super Bowl, which will be like a month before the movie comes out. I was just say they. Would no, never. I'd say probably yeah. December, Christmas? maybe. Yeah, yeah, December may be, um, oh, but it's, 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 hear me out. words, Just hear me out. October. Comic-Con. That would make sense. We, 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 already, we got the yeah, Comic-Con like Comic coming is back. I close to this movie. Like, Look, it just would be Yeah, but where would you put it Comic -Con in Comic-Con? You think Sony's having a, 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 I was going to say a press conference, uh, uh, a Spider panel? Spider-Verse panel. Uh, they done. definitely are with Craven and Madam Web and all the other stuff we don't want to see. And then yeah, they'll they, end with this. I thought it was a big thing because of the writer strike that they couldn't really have. Like, what, what, what are you going to discuss? You know, mm -hmm. I'm curious. It will be interesting to see if the writer strike has an impact on Comic Con. That's a fair call out. Yeah, yeah. I will. It is worth noting that it will probably not have that much of an effect on the next Spider Verse movie because I believe that right. team is underneath the Animation Guild, not the WGA. Yep. Which, yeah, yes. if you ever want to see something, like, entirely confusing for an outsider, look into, like, the different um, unions in filmmaking. Because everything is underneath a different union. And 
Most are standing in solidarity with the WGA. Because they should. Which, remember, support the right. Interesting, though, to see they didn't use bargaining power to kind of group together on getting an agreement. Like, the, I saw that the Directors Guild reached a tentative agreement today, and it would have been great to see I mean, that some of what they were asking that. for around um, generative AI and how that's going to impact. Like, it, it is now written into their union agreement that AI cannot be used as a major factor in, in the direction of any film. And that's something the writers have been pushing for real hard. I mean, that and was the fact a, that they can't get over that hump is kind of mind boggling to me. So that was a tactic pulled straight from the two oh seven oh eight, um, where they yeah. they got the directors guild on board with them, but not the against the writers. And it was a whole thing, and obviously it didn't work out for the studios then. It's not going to work out for the studios now. I'm interested to see where it all lines up, but yeah, support the writers, support their projects, support them. They're fantastic. We would not have this without them. And yeah, this movie. Fantastic movie. Go watch this. We've been talking for over an hour. Yes. I feel like we should probably wrap the show at some point, but god damn, I love this movie. We'll be back to talk about the next one in March. Now if that doesn't get you excited. I don't know what does. Mitch, what what movie are we talking about next on this show? What's coming out next? Uh, I need to go see The Little Mermaid still so we can talk about that. We'll do that. Uh, Great movie. We'll probably talk about that Cheetos movie when that drops on Disney+. Plus. We've got Secret Invasion starting in a couple of weeks. Elemental is out in two weeks. What the hell? So much has happened. Yeah. Indiana Jones. We're, we've got three movies and a TV series to review this month, and I'm going to die. That's why normally it's three seasons in a movie. But... No, six seasons. I know, I know. I just had to work we're getting it. In, the, okay. Um, we're getting the movie, goddammit, and I'm so happy. We are. We get it. We're getting so much happening, so keep up with us. Well, okay, I say we're getting the movie, but the like going back to the writer's strike, we saw what that did in 0708 of how things got kind of swept under the rug or quietly canceled. And I think much. we're gonna see a lot of that happening now too, which is I'm sorry to tell you this, but we're not getting this movie. <laughs> but we are going to get Blue Beetle, which I know has nothing to do with this show, but I'm just really excited for Blue Beetle. I mean, fair. It looks really fun. Um, all of this randomness set aside. Ruben, if people want to keep up with you, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube at The Penultimate Conquest. Uh, we are also going to be doing our review tomorrow for Across the Spider-Verse, so we'll see how that goes. Go watch that um, That's definitely going live before ours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Go watch it. It's already up on YouTube. Um, yeah, we're, we'll be also covering... I know this isn't a video games podcast, but we'll be doing covering uh, Key 3, so take a look. Yeah. Go check it out. I promise we won't be doing... Is that this week? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's starting oh, this damn week. Well, <laughs> games Direct starts on Saturday. I'm excited. Yes, uh, but we are not, Griffin, we are not watching the PC Game Showcase. I can guarantee you that. You don't want to. You don't want to play. Uh, well, what game do we play when that was happening? I, I thought it was uh, uh, the dodgeball game. Yeah, I just can't remember the name of it. Knockout City. Thank there you go, <laughs> Knockout City. Yeah, great well, game. Great one game. of the best. Pieces of great game. game. Rest in rest in peace. Rest in power. Rest yeah, in power. Great game. Um, but yeah, no. Go follow Ruben. Go follow, uh, follow Penultimate Conquest. Fantastic stuff over there. Mitch, if people want to keep up with us and our shenanigans, where can people find us? At D plus us on your social platform of choice, even though the Instagram doesn't have anything on it yet. I'm working on it. Um, yeah. Uh, YouTube.com slash D plus us. Twitter.com slash D plus us. Uh, Griffin is all over the place at Griffin Deephead. That's G-R-I-F-F-I-D-P-A-D. I'm on the internet lamenting about all things Marvel and Disney at Mr. Mitch George. Yeah, go check out other stuff. our other stuff. Like Mitch mentioned, we will be talking about Secret Invasion as soon as that starts. We have plenty of other stuff up as well. And we should finally be having our first ever video essay up probably next week if I can sit down with okay. Premiere for a little bit. So oh, Stuff stops happening in Florida. Yeah, seriously, something happens. At the also, I just remembered right. they're doing a Lion King prequel, and I, for I don't know why that's happening. What, what brought that up? Are you just go, scrolling through Disney movies coming out? I'm just scrolling through the list of movies for next year because I forgot the actual date of the Spider-Man movie. March 20th. And then I found it. Yeah, but then I also saw Madam Web and that made me sad. <laughs> and then I saw uh, Snow White coming out a week before Beyond the Spider-Verse and then realizing, oh, God, we're still going to be as busy as we are this year. Next year. 
Uh, this this never stops for us. Now nah, keep an eye out for that video, though. That's gonna be a big one. Then we've done it to ourselves, and we're happy for it. Yeah, keep an eye out. Did you know Chris stuff. Pratt's playing Garfield? Yeah, I've made fun of this already what? on the show. I did not know that at all, and I don't like that. Stick with one. All right, you could. Do, you okay, got on, Mario. On, we don't need you to be Garfield. On that fantastic note. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will be back in the next episode. But until then, happy Pride and have a magical day. Why is Chris Pratt Garfield?